So let's have a little lesson on this work. I'll also talk about the arranging process I went through to make the addition. And there's a link for that addition in the video description. So this is an arrangement um, by Bach in his notebook for Anna Magna Lena Bach. So it's number 25 for voice and continuo. So continuo could be realized by the keyboard or the lute or whatever instrument, most likely the keyboard for Bach or the organ. Uh, in this particular case, what I did is I took the vocal line and just wrote it down first and made sure all the contour was correct and the notes are all intact. After doing that, I added the just the, the just the continuo line, so the bass line, and I and I put that through the whole piece, and I raised the the continuo line up an octave, and then because of voice overlap, I did have to change it in one or two spots. But for the most part, the contour mm. of the continual line and the vocal line are, are pretty intact in my arrangement. So I put it into the key of G major, and some people who have played this in E major might find it a little bit easier in E major, but I found that I had to uh, rewrite so many of the bass lines and change the contour of the line so much that I just wasn't happy with it. So putting it into G major, I almost didn't have to change the contour of the bass lines except in one or two spots where there were voice overlaps. So it's pretty much just box arrangement for the most part. <laughs> um, I didn't fill out the chords or realize the continual line because I think on the guitar the vocal line plus the continual line is plenty to play and it also just it's very consistent this way. Um, you have two voices throughout the whole piece and they're very intact and very consistent and, and just nice and simple in that way. So when you're practicing this piece, of course, um, it's a vocal line, so practice the top line on its own that stems up. And just make sure that you have that, that contour the way that you want it. Then add in the continual line, the bass voice, um, and just try to keep that quality of the upper line very consistent. You might want to practice the bass line on its own too. There's lots of leaps, but... It's a very, you know, it's, it's a very connected uh, voice of its own. So practice the two lines individually and then bring them together and keep that high quality of phrasing or articulation that you wanted when you played them separately. Besides that, um, you're just navigating um, through the piece a little bit. So I'll do a walkthrough and we'll just um, cover a few points and, and just I'll go a little bit slower and, and discuss it. So I keep my, my thumb in the bass line the whole time. I just all of the bass with the thumb just to be consistent in that way and to keep it as a separate voice. Especially because I had to make the voices somewhat close together. experimented with bringing this line down an octave so it wouldn't be on the same pitch but um, I just found like the part afterwards was much easier in the original octave this is all raised up but um, I kept the exact contours that Bach had so you have this octave leap there and so I do play it on a different string so that you can sustain the melody note while playing the, that bass line. So at least you have both voices intact and you don't sacrifice it. Until the last eighth note there. And then you repeat that section. I added a little trill there. open strings in the bass, which just happens to work out nicely. 
then just reach up and make sure you hold on to that note. That 4-2 trill might give some people trouble, but just make sure that you're just staying organized, that your hand positions are good. Keep that finger there, and it's pretty straightforward. This works out really nicely. There, there's a little bit of, you know, the, there can be a little bit of bouncy separation or detachment on the quarter notes, so that's an okay jump. So there, I just jumped down. to jump down on the longer rhythm, right? Now here, play the F sharp here, and then you can do your barre. And I lift that barre right away. I don't really want everything to sustain, you know, like a romantic era piece. Um, just play those two notes, connect it to the next note, and you can lift your barre. I do the bar right early here, just because it, it, during those eighth notes I don't really want to jump the first finger over. Squeeze the third finger in here, so you have enough fingers to play everything. So just you just have to circle that there if, if the... Sometimes I would accidentally read the fingering and play a G sharp, but just squeeze that third finger in cadence. I had a trill there. This is the same as the beginning. Same trick there. I wanted to keep the original contour of the bass line, so we go up an octave, and then we go back to the dosino. to just end with just the simple two voices still because that's what we've been doing for the whole arrangement but if you like you can throw in the G and the B there for a more full chord at the end it might be kind of nice um, or 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 just do what I did and just two voices just nice and simple but just end the piece right on that from out of there. So um, it's a really great piece uh, for um, casual gigs or performance. It doesn't matter what you're using it for. It's, it's a very common uh, wedding piece. Uh, great for maybe the signing or even walking down. It has a nice like walking pace to it. So a great piece to have in the gig book, but it's, it's kind of a lovely piece um, just on its, in its own right and uh, based on, on box arrangement of the, the Stossel piece.